Imagine turning your curiosity about AI into a $100,000 monthly income. Over the past 12 months, I've done just that. So stick around and I'll teach you everything you need to know to do the same in 2024 by starting your own AI business. Whether you want to make an extra 20K per month and run an online business from the beach or build a billion dollar empire, the AI space truly has something for everyone. Booms like this current AI super cycle are some of the only chances people like you and I get to move up the wealth ladder and live a life on our own terms. However, with so much happening in the AI space constantly, it's nearly impossible to see through the hype to the real opportunities that will allow you to get your slice of the AI pie. As someone who has started four different successful AI businesses in the past year, I've been able to learn from first-hand experience which opportunities are best for beginners to start and which opportunities should be avoided at all costs. I've packed so much value into this video that I've split it up into four different chapters. Firstly, chapter one is, is starting an AI business right for you? We'll be covering important questions that you need to ask in order to determine if this is the right opportunity for you. In chapter two, I'll be breaking down the five different types of AI businesses, sharing pros and cons, startup costs, experience required, etc. on each of these so that you can select the right vehicle for you to succeed. Then in chapter three, we'll be doing a crash course on the core AI business skills in the practical section of this video, where you'll be learning the core skills that you need to succeed as an AI entrepreneur. And finally, in chapter four, I'll be giving you a step-by-step -step launch guide to start an AI business in 2024 as a beginner that avoids all the common mistakes that I see beginners make that prevent them from becoming successful in the AI space as an entrepreneur. I can confidently say you will not find another video like this anywhere on the internet as there's no one else with my AI business experience on YouTube. As I said, I've started four different types of AI businesses in 2023, three of which I'm still actively running right now. And I also run the world's largest community of AI agency owners. So I've got to see firsthand the skills and the strategies that hundreds and thousands of my students have used to build successful AI businesses. And what I've done in this video is really condensed all of this knowledge into a complete guide to starting an AI business in 2024 to get you started on the best business model for you with my step-by-step -step strategy. If you've clicked on this video, you already know how much potential the AI space has for those who are willing to go and get it. My story of going from zero to over $100,000 per month in under 12 months is evidence of just how rapidly your life can change with the right sequence of moves. So if you are serious about making the most of this potentially once in a lifetime opportunity, what I want you to do is firstly close all of your other tabs, go and get a notebook and a pen and dedicate some time and set it aside to watch this video, rewatch it, add this to your watch later so that if you fall off the video at any point, you can come back and find it easily because this is gonna take a couple watches to really absorb all the information that I'm giving so that you can take it and apply it in your own life. Pause the video until you've done all that and then we can move forward. Before you sit here for a half an hour or an hour and listen to some random dude yap on about making money online, you should probably know that the person you're listening to knows this shit. As someone who was once in your position browsing YouTube and trying to find a way to make money online, I've taken the bait of enough dudes with Lambos to know that it is incredibly important to know the background and also the intentions of someone like myself before taking their advice. So if you're new to the channel and want to know a little bit more about myself and my story, here's a little explainer, but if you don't care or already know my story, feel free to skip to the good stuff using the timestamps below. So my name is Liam Otley. I'm a 23 year old entrepreneur originally from a small city in New Zealand called Whangarei. And around two years ago, I moved to live here in Dubai. I've been trying to run successful online businesses since I left high school in 2018. And my AI business journey started at the end of 2022 when my mind was blown by ChatGPT and what it could do. Upon realizing that the AI space was about to explode, I did something I never thought I would do, start a YouTube channel. And by consistently posting AI business content over 2023, I was able to launch four AI businesses of my own. Firstly, Morningside AI is my AI development company where we build AI solutions for other businesses. Secondly, my AAA Accelerator is my AI business community where myself and my coaches teach other people how to start an AI business like Morningside. Thirdly, Agentive is my AI SaaS platform that simplifies the creation of AI agents for businesses. And I also did some consulting on the side, which is kind of like my fourth little business I started last year. It has been through starting, scaling, and struggling with these businesses that I've learned what I'm about to share with you in this video. There's a lot of things that I wish I knew that I now feel obliged to share so that you can avoid some of the mistakes that I made 
and throughout the next four chapters of this video, I'll be sharing this knowledge. My focus over the next few years is to grow Agentive into the must-have platform for AI agency owners to deliver their solutions fast and effectively, and ideally make it worth hundreds of millions of dollars. One of the cool things about my journey, at least the AI part of it, is that you can literally scroll back through my videos and see me transform from this AI noob into the leader of a new wave of online business that I'm extremely proud to have started. So that's my background. The second part of this is my intentions. Why am I giving away the source and creating more competitors for myself? Firstly, this space is way too big for me to tackle on my own. My company, Morningside AI and Agentive and things like this, there's no way that we could take even just one niche on our own. That It's such a big market that's developing here. There's no reason for me to be greedy and kind of gatekeep it. Secondly, and kind of selfishly, I like some more cool friends. <laughs> and when I make these videos and introduce people to the AI business space, you eventually start your own businesses and then we become friends at some point. I've met some great people and made great friends out of my community and out of the people in my uh, paid program. And this is really just a way for me to continue to use business as a vehicle to make new friends and, and build relationships, which is really the, the best part of my life. And thirdly, goodwill compounds faster than money. So by me making these videos, making these free resources, hopefully you appreciate it, you share my videos around, and that compounds my growth and, and my personal brand and everything that I'm trying to do in my life faster than any kind of money ever would. So with all that out of the way, I hope you think I'm qualified to be teaching what I'm about to teach. I'm so excited for you, and I hope someday in the future we cross paths and you can say that this is the video that started you on your journey to becoming an AI entrepreneur. And I truly hope that some of you watching this video go on to be far more successful than me in the AI space, because that would mean I did a good job with this video. Chapter one, is starting an AI business right for you? Before we can get into the nitty gritty like your step-by-step -step launch strategy and teaching you the core skills you need to succeed as an AI entrepreneur, which we're going to be covering later in this video, the first question you need to ask is whether or not starting an AI business is right for you. That is the focus of this chapter. By the end, you'll fully understand a few key things like whether or not entrepreneurship is right for you, whether or not you need to be a developer to succeed in AI business, how much time per week you need to commit to succeed with AI business, and why would you choose to start an online AI business and not a different model like SMMA or dropshipping? AI is a broad field and there truly is something for everyone in this space, but answering these questions is key before moving forward. So firstly, is entrepreneurship right for you? Before you waste even another second watching this video, we need to address the question, is entrepreneurship right for you? Is starting your own business the right move and do you have what it takes and the commitment required to make this successful in the long run? Entrepreneurship and particularly online entrepreneurship has become very romanticized and hip these days, but there's actually a significant dark side to it that you don't see a lot of the time on Instagram and you don't see all of the failures really behind the scenes. So I thought I'd take you through a little trip right now of my experience of becoming an online entrepreneur and how I've gone from basically having no skills and no money to where I am right now living in my dream apartment in Dubai, going on business trips to the Austrian Alps and generally living the life I've always dreamed of with my friends. As I've said in my other videos, building an online business takes time, effort and sacrifice and there is no way around it. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's going to be easy, it's going to be a walk in the park because it is not and it's probably going to take a lot longer than you think right now to find success. But as you'll learn later in this video, it is well worth the effort. The life of an entrepreneur is dotted with brutal ups and downs and the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. The most difficult thing for a lot of people to adapt to about entrepreneurship is that at the end of the day, you and only you are entirely responsible for all of your successes and all of your failures. So there's total accountability on both sides. And because of this, not everyone is cut out for entrepreneurship and not everyone has what it takes. Everything I'm telling you is from my own experience of being an online entrepreneur for five years now since I graduated high school. Over my years in the online business space, I've had my fair share of ups and downs. I started my entrepreneurial journey on my gap year while I was living in Edinburgh. I had this crusty little flat and I was working for the hours in the morning before I went to work. I'd go to work and I'll come back and then I'll go to the gym and then I'd work all the time up until I went to bed. Over this period, I lost all of my money trying to start e-commerce stores and only after 14 months did I make my first dollar of profit. So the life of an entrepreneur starting out can be rough and a lot of the time the success that you envision happening is going to take a lot longer than you initially thought. But success is possible and it is rewarded to the people who are willing to do the work on a long enough time scales. So as someone who doesn't come from money and literally used to sell fake Rolexes and protein powder at high school just to make a bit of money, 
To someone who now owns one, believe me that entrepreneurship is worthwhile if you're willing to do the work. And when you do get there, I promise you it is the best job in the world. I get to work on projects that I'm excited to work on every single day. I get to work wherever I want in the world. I get to make money with people I really enjoy being around and really just live a life on my own terms. And at a certain stage, you get to set your sights on building something that you are truly proud of, like I am right now. So what I'm trying to say here is that you need to be self-aware enough to be able to ask yourself the question of, do I have what it takes? Am I ready to commit myself to this journey that is probably going to take a lot longer than I think, but is the reward at the end of it worth my time and commitment? Now, if the answer for you is yes, and you are ready to commit to this journey, just know that the hardest part is getting started. The purpose of this video is to educate you on AI business and then give you the information you need and the step-by-step -step process to get started down the right path the first time. Now, if you still don't have a notebook and a pen, go and get by now and save this video to watch later because if you've committed to this, you're gonna to need to watch this multiple times. You're gonna sit here for an hour, half an hour, however long it's gonna be so that you can really study each part of this video so that you can get off on the right foot. Do I need to be a developer to start an AI business? This is probably the most common question I get from people who are on the fence about starting an AI business and a pretty valid question at that. Since I first started talking about the AI businesses that I run, this has been a hotly debated topic with seemingly everyone weighing in on things on this topic and, and taking pot shots via YouTube videos and tweets and stuff. The simple answer to this question is no, you do not need to be a developer to start an AI business. The long-winded answer is a little bit different. As you'll learn later in this video, there are a number of different businesses you can start in the AI space there really is something for everyone. Some of these businesses we're going to cover can only be started if you are a developer. Some of them can be made a lot easier if you have a little bit of development experience, and some you can start with absolutely no development experience at all. So no, you don't need to be a developer to start an AI business in 2024. There are plenty of on-ramps into the space that are available to everyone. And later in this video, I'll help you pick the best option out of the five business models for you. Next question is how much time do I need to invest each week to create an AI business? To prepare for this video, I spoke to as many people as I could who are outside the space, working regular jobs and unable to drop everything to pursue an online AI business. And aside from do I need to be a developer, questions about the, the time investment needed was the second most common question I got. Sometimes it's difficult for me to think back to when I was 18 and working a day job and trying to cram in work on my e-commerce stores by getting up at 5 a.m and working until I went to work and then coming back from work and then working until 11 p.m. each night. But for many of you who want to start an online business to be able to work on your own schedule whenever you want, this time aspect and the time investment needed to see success is a huge factor in your decision-making process of whether you jump into this opportunity in the first place. Now, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Some of the AI business types that I'm going to cover later in this video do require a lot of work, especially for a complete beginner, but others have a much more gradual buildup and are much more suitable for people who are busy students or mums and dads or for those of you who are already working a nine to five and who want to kind of at least chart a course into AI space by taking small steps each day. For those of you who are on a restricted time budget, sequencing your steps into the AI business world is extremely important as by chaining together the right types of businesses and slowly evolving towards your end goal, you can achieve the flexibility you need to get in and stay in the game. The step-by-step -step strategy to start your own AI business in 2024 that we'll be covering in the final chapter will set you up on a path that will allow you to make these gradual improvements and commit as much time as you need and can afford to uh, invest in your business. So to answer the question, starting an AI business as a beginner can require you to put in anywhere from one hour to 12 hours per day. It simply depends on the business model you choose from the ones we're about to cover and how rapidly you want to see results. Obviously more time put in will lead to faster results. So it's a, it's a kind of balancing of those things, the vehicle that you pick and also the, the time scale that you want to see the results on. Another valid question that I get a lot is on why someone should choose to start an online business in the AI space and not some of the more typical online business models like social media marketing agencies or e-commerce stores or Amazon FBA. And the easiest way to explain this is from my own experience. As someone who has run successful e-commerce stores and has helped to scale a social media marketing agency, my decision to go all in on the AI space wasn't an easy one when I was looking at the big picture. Regardless of the business model you choose, creating your own successful online business will allow you to make twenty dollars to $50,000 per month. Most business models will allow you to make up to that range. And with this kind of income, you have the means to live and work anywhere in the world, on your own schedule, from a laptop, whatever you want. And I've spent the past three years of my life traveling constantly with my businesses and kind of doing just that. I've been fortunate enough to do 
awesome things over the past three years and I'm only 23 years old. But with all else being equal with these business models, yes, you can make 20 to $50,000 a month if you put in the work. You can live overseas, you can run it fully on from your laptop, wherever you want to. With all of that stuff being equal, the only difference between these business models is really the long-term benefits and long-term opportunities that they set you up for. Personally, my goals are to make hundreds of millions of dollars over the coming decades. And from my experience in the digital marketing and e-commerce space, the opportunities to do so are far more limited than in the AI space. What it really comes down to is which industry you want to bet on and build your skills. Personally, I see more upside in the AI space right now because large language models as we know them are really only about a year old. Yes, they did exist before that, but in their current state and how people use them and, and build them in businesses and use ChatGPT, it's only really been about 12 months that they've existed as they currently do. This means that anyone can really be in the top 1% of experts very quickly and start to monetize their skill set. I've literally done this in front of everyone over the past 12 months. You can scroll back and see my earlier videos and you will see just how stupid I was when it came to a lot of the, the stuff that I talk about now. And when comparing this ability that you've seen me do in front of your eyes to become an expert in the AI space versus other industries, where you're going up against people who have maybe 10 plus years of experience, 15 years. If you go into the marketing space, these guys have been doing that for decades. And for you to try to become an expert and start to compete on their level and try to get the kind of money and wealth that they are generating, you've got like 15 years of, of a, a skill gap between you two. But when you look at maybe myself and where you are right now, 12 months is all, all that's elapsed and it's really a, a much more closable gap. So if you choose to put your time and effort into this AI space, you have a, a much better chance, a much shorter path to becoming one of these sort of top 1% of people within the space who are knowledgeable and considered experts. And with becoming an expert, you get expert level money and wealth starts to flow to you instead of you having to really struggle and, and force all these opportunities and find the opportunities for yourself. At least in my experience, they start to come to you and it's honestly been a complete game changer for my life and for my career. So long story short, if you are hungry to succeed and willing to commit to the AI space for the next five to 10 years, I believe there's far more to be gained by starting a business in this emerging space and choosing to build your skill set in the AI space in particular and build a reputation in the space that can open up doors and opportunities that you never could have planned for. A massive undeniable factor in entrepreneurial success is luck. Even guys like Jeff Bezos will tell you that. In order to benefit from luck in many cases, you need to be in the right place at the right time with the right skills, with the right connections, with the right resources. But the good thing is, is that you can engineer yourself to be able to take advantage of these lucky chances by constantly grinding in the space and building up those kind of things, your resources, your connections, your skills. You simply cannot get lucky if you don't have the, the soil for the luck to land in, if we use a kind of a seed analogy. It needs to be able to land somewhere for you to cultivate that into a really big opportunity and great outcome for yourself. For me right now, the AI space is by far the most fertile soil that I could try to cultivate, and it's well worth the time and effort of me continuously toiling and working in the space because I know that the opportunities are far bigger than if I was going into a more mature sector where the chances of outsized returns I've kind of normalized by now. I'm honestly just so excited to continue grinding and putting in the work in the space and excited to see what kind of plays come my way in the coming years by doing that. You too can put your bets on the AI space and try to get in the way of some of the huge gains that are going to come, but you need to convert from a spectator to an active participant in the market. And I've talked about this in other videos, but I think there is just a massive like 95% of people who are AI curious or into the an AI enthusiast in the space right now, don't take offense to this, but all you are is a spectator. You are just sitting there and watching and browsing and consuming videos like this, but you're not ever making the jump over into being an actual participant of the market. And that is only really possible through starting a business, through starting a project, through starting to do something rather than just consuming. So take the knowledge that I'm giving you in this video and try to actually take your first step into making that jump into a participant. As a participant is how you can build up those connections, those skills beyond just what the spectators and put yourself into the top five, one, 0.1% .1 of people in the space and you can start to generate some of the wealth that comes from being in that minority. Now with all of those key questions out the way, I want you to pause this video, go over any notes you took and just really confirm and lock in with yourself that this is the kind of vehicle and this is the opportunity that you want to go in. Do you have the resources? Do you have the time? Are you willing to put in the effort? Is entrepreneurship even right for you? One of the most common beginner mistakes I see when getting into businesses like this is that they just jump in and they don't actually do the maths and really build a solid foundation of conviction in the decision that they're making. So I want you to really think right now, is this right for me? Is this the right choice for me? And am I willing to commit to it over the time that it's gonna take to succeed? Because otherwise, if you're not fully committed, you're gonna fall off halfway through and you're gonna waste all this time. So please 
have some kind of conviction, be sure that this is right for you. Look over the questions I've just answered. And if you're ready to move forward and you're ready to commit to this, let's jump into the five different AI business types that you can start in 2024. Chapter two, the five different types of online AI businesses. The AI business landscape in 2024 truly has something for everyone. And in this section, we'll be breaking down what opportunities there are for beginners to get started, the pros and cons of each, and how you can progress through these different business models over time to leapfrog towards bigger and better opportunities. I've used this exact method of leapfrogging through different types of AI businesses, as I've personally run all of the businesses we'll be covering here except the last one, so I'm really sharing my experiences and what I wish I knew before starting so that you can avoid my mistakes. AI business number one is AI consulting. The experience required to start this is none, the startup costs are zero, the time to make money or make profit is around three months, and the long-term potential of AI consulting, in my opinion, is low. Starting off with the easiest of the bunch, AI consulting is a super beginner-friendly way to start making money with AI in 2024, and by far one of the fastest ways to start earning if you follow the right steps. There are two parts to starting your own consulting business. Firstly, learning the info you need to be able to help your clients, and that includes the core skills that we'll be covering in the next section of this video, so stick around for that. Secondly, you need to attract the clients that you're going to do consulting for. So let's break this down. Consulting is essentially profiting off of the knowledge gap between you and your target audience. So, so rather than try to learn all this AI stuff themselves, people will pay you or businesses will pay you to tell them things like what AI can do for their business, the best AI tools to use for their industry or their use case, where AI is going and how they can plan ahead. Not rocket science, right? You can actually learn this information over a month or two of study to be able to get to a point where you can start to take calls. Setting aside an hour or two per day to get deep into the AI space by binging channels like mine, and if you can afford it, jumping into a paid community like my Accelerator to be tapped directly into the latest in the space, and that'll allow you to build the knowledge gap you need to become valuable as a consultant. Again, a crash course to understand the foundational core skills you'll need to succeed as an AI consultant are going to be covered in the next section of this video. You only really need enough info to be able to hop on your first few calls, and you'll learn very quickly what you don't know and where you need to study based on the questions your clients are asking. I say all this because I was literally doing it this time last year. Consulting was actually the first way that I made money with AI last year by adding a Calendly link under my YouTube videos, starting off at $300 for 45 minutes. And to illustrate just how quickly you can get started with AI consulting, I first tried ChatGPT in December of 2022. I launched my channel in January of 2023, and by March, I was booking three to five of these $300 consulting calls per week. An extra $1,000 a week for just hopping on calls was pretty exciting for me at this point in my journey. Pretty soon, I was getting bombarded with calls, and I had to increase my prices to $500 for 45 minutes, and then to $997 for 45 minutes, in order to get the quantity of calls per week down to the levels that I was happy with so that they weren't distracting me from the bigger things that I'm working on like Morningside or my education business. Yes, I've been charging over $1,000 per hour for my consulting for the past six to eight months, and I know it's ridiculous, and I even say that on my calendar page, but people still pay it. The tricky part, of course, for most people is not necessarily the learning of the information, which I'm gonna make easy for you in a couple minutes, but actually attracting the clients who are willing to pay for your time is typically where people get stuck. My recommended strategy for getting started as a consultant is to pick one platform, for example, X or Twitter or LinkedIn or YouTube, etc., and focus on sharing your learnings there as you build your knowledge gap. This is exactly what I did on YouTube and it took me to over $1,000 per hour in the space of about six months. You need to be able to follow your curiosity and try new tools and discover interesting use cases and share them constantly to prove that you know your shit. With this consistent posting and frequently mentioning that you are available for consulting calls, you will be landing calls in no time. This is what I did. You look at all of my early YouTube videos. The only way I was monetizing the channel was through these consulting calls. And throughout it, I'd say, hey, look, if you're interested in learning more about this, you can book a call with me down below. The first four or five months of my channel until the agency was up and running properly and making you some money, I was saying consulting calls. That was the call to action, the conversion rate I was pushing people towards the entire time. If you do choose to go down the AI consulting route, it can help to niche down to be an expert in one area. This will allow you to charge more and build a reputation within your little space. Because again, AI is very broad. The, if you're addressing businesses, there's a million different types of businesses. Some examples of niching down your consulting offer could be saying things like, I help home services business owners to create their 24 month AI strategy. Or I help CEOs understand what AI means for their businesses and how to utilize it to crush the competition 
where I help real estate agents to wrap their heads around AI. These are just a few ideas to get you going, but this is the kind of niching down of like a specific area that you focus on that you can do. And as a disclaimer, your first 10 calls will be scary. I was terrified jumping on those calls, but I pushed through and I offered a 100% money back guarantee. So there was absolutely no risk of bad blood if I wasn't able to help them with my initially pretty spotty knowledge. If you'd like an even more in-depth breakdown of how to start a consulting business in the AI space, let me know down below. I'm more than happy to do one for you guys if there's enough demand. Business type number two is an AI education business. Experience required to start, none. Startup costs, 100 to 300 for courses and software. Time to profit, around three months. Long-term potential, in my opinion, is medium. There is a massive need for education and educators in the AI space. And I mean, my, my growth on YouTube has been a testament to that, going from zero to 100,000 subs in eight months last year by helping just entrepreneurs to get into AI and learn more about it. Not only are there millions of views up for grabs, but there's also millions of dollars up for grabs as people are willing to pay for specialized AI training and education. My own AI education business, AAA Accelerator, has had over 2,000 people join over the past six months, each paying anywhere from $97 to $197 per month to learn how to start an AI business from myself, my coaches, and my team. If you don't believe me that AI education is a massive opportunity for people to get started with AI business, you need to remember that for us as people who are somewhat in the space or at least AI curious, which I'm sure many of you or all of you watching this video are, we can take basic skills like using ChatGPT properly for granted, but there are billions of people who are yet to discover or at least properly utilize the magic of large language models and things like ChatGPT. When you combine this with the fact that millions of people each year in Western and sort of first world countries are going to lose their jobs due to automation from AI systems, there is exploding demand for high quality educational resources like courses for people who are out of a job and are looking to become proficient in AI so that they can find a new job or at least prevent themselves from losing their jobs to AI again. Remember that AI will not replace humans. Humans who can use AI will replace humans who can't. Therefore, there is undoubtedly a huge need for AI education businesses to come in and facilitate this education and upskilling of the entire working population of the world, and even kids too. Like Everyone's gonna to need to learn how to use this stuff at some point. So starting an AI education business is smart because you're putting yourself in the way of this massive amount of demand that's coming very soon and is already underway. Like with AI consulting, starting an AI education business is also super accessible for beginners and the path from complete AI and business noob to making money from your AI education business is similar to the AI consulting route. Firstly, you'll need to learn the info that you'll eventually teach. Again, we're covering the core skills that you'll need in the next section of this video, and you can watch YouTube and you can find a coach or a mentor, anything to help you get that initial bit of information that's gonna allow you to eventually teach one day. Secondly, you'll want to identify a part of the AI market that you want to specialize in education for. Thirdly, you want to condense your knowledge into an info product, and this can be something like a course or an ebook or a paid community, etc. And finally, you need to drive customers to your business through content, ads, partnerships, and more. That may sound super scary and difficult for you, but I promise it's a lot more straightforward than you think. As soon as I say business, it sounds big and scary, but when it comes to the day-to-day -day actions you need to take, it's fairly straightforward. It's setting aside one to two hours per day to learn the knowledge you'll one day teach, and then you can start to put together your first little education product, e.g. an ebook. And then you need to pick some kind of strategy to attract customers and stick with it until you're getting traction. How exactly you can attract customers to your business and make your first sales is covered in the step-by-step -step strategy in the final section and final chapter of this video. It's important to realize that you don't need to hit a home run the first time. Big businesses are going to take a long time to build. And for many of you, this will be your first business. And there are so many skills that you will pick up along the way, but these skills take time to accumulate and really to set into part of your character and build into you. That's why starting off small and getting the ball rolling and giving yourself the time to adapt to being a business owner is so key. Every single one of you watching this video can go and research a topic in AI and create some kind of ebook around it. That's your foothold. That's your foot in the door. That's from where you can continue to keep expanding your knowledge until you're the best in your industry or the niche that you've chosen. There are levels to the game and you can't take any shortcuts between them. You just need to start small and learn along the way. So in summary, the way you create value and make money as an AI education business owner, at least in the short term, is to create some kind of info product that effectively condenses the chaos of the AI space into a concentrated dose of knowledge to help people understand AI and how it affects them in their job or their business or their personal life. 
Some examples of AI education businesses you could start could be master content creation for AI, full course for solopreneurs, or AI crash course for CEOs, how to navigate the next five years, or master open AI GPT building, a beginner's guide to AI agents. Or I mean, you could do something like AI literacy program for teens, prepare your children for success in the AI age. These are all just ideas that I came up with. And of course you needed a little bit more research, but it shows you how many different angles you can take and how many opportunities and niche opportunities to do AI education there are within the space. I'd happily make an entire video on AI education businesses alone. So if you're interested in that and want me to make a video, again, let me know down below. I'll be making videos based off what comments I see the most of and most likes and stuff like that. So go down there, comment, leave likes on other people who are commenting about it as well. Business type number three is an AI agency. Experience required to start is none. Startup costs can be $300 or more depending on the software you choose to use. The time to profit is again around three months and the long-term potential of an AI agency, in my opinion, is high. An AI automation agency, or more broadly an AI agency, is an AI business model that I first discovered and popularized in 2023. The official definition of an AI automation agency that I penned in July of 2023 was an online business model focused on helping small to medium-sized businesses to automate their systems and processes with AI technology. Essentially, the AI agency business model is built on top of this historical trend that with any new technology like the web or smartphone apps, a middle layer of businesses always appears who specialize in the new technology and help businesses all around the world to adopt it and benefit from some of the gains that it can provide. Since this time last year, I've been running my own six and almost seven figure AI agency, Morningside AI, which has allowed me to generate consistent cash flow and support a team of expert AI developers. Without agencies like Morningside, businesses would struggle to know how to benefit from the gains new technology like AI can provide, and they lack the resources to build these systems themselves. These middle layer industries like web, app and blockchain development companies are worth billions once the technology has reached mass adoption. Now I know what you're thinking, how the f am I gonna build an AI development company? I can't code and I don't know the first thing about software. Well, do I have good news for you. Last year, I laid out the three tiers of AI automation agency services, which I've simplified down to no-code solutions, low-code solutions, and custom-coded solutions. This three-tier structure allows for you to enter the AI agency space at whatever skill level you have. E.g. as a developer, you can jump straight into the custom-coded solutions, but if you're a complete beginner, you can start with the no-code side of things. In the next chapter of this video, we'll be going through a crash course on the core AI business skills that you need to succeed no matter which tier you are jumping in at. As an AI agency owner, you get to choose the level of complexity of the solutions that you offer. For example, if you're just starting out, you can literally start by upselling other people's software. There are some awesome plug and play chatbot and automation companies that allow you to make customer support assistance and lead generation chatbots and appointment setters. All you need to do is enter your client's info, test it, and then deploy it for them. I can do a whole video on my recommended platforms if you'd like, so let me know down below if you want that. But getting super familiar with all these insane AI tools that are coming out every day and using the hard work of these software companies to deliver handy AI solutions to businesses is accessible to anyone. You can even start on Fiverr and list yourself there and just build their solution in 10 minutes on someone else's solution. Using this method, all you're doing is really finding the tools and connecting the business owner to them and taking money in between. This is known as arbitrage and there's, there's nothing unethical about it. In fact, one of the most successful agency owners in my AI agency accelerator, Mark, got started using this exact same method of going on Fiverr and finding cool tools and offering services and fulfilling with the tools. Like it's, it's not rocket science and it's an easy way for people to get started if you don't have a super deep development background. These little projects can make you a few hundred dollars here and there and even allow you to stack up some monthly recurring income. So you could be saying $200 per month for you to prepare and maintain a chatbot for your clients. But once you've got the ball rolling with other people's software, from there you can start to work on your skills or hire your first developer with some of the cash that you've got and start to explore some more tailored but still low code solutions like building GPTs for businesses or AI agents. There's a whole ecosystem of these platforms that are a little bit more complex and allow for a little bit more customization and therefore require a little bit more skill. But once you're familiar with these tools and these platforms, you can now service a wider pool of customers and charge more for your services because you can do it to a lot more customize it and customize it to their needs much better than you could with some of these like plug and play AI tools. 
these more custom projects that are built on low code software can net you anywhere from a thousand dollars a piece to up to ten thousand dollars or more and i'm not just plucking these out of thin air this is from my own experience of running my agency then from there once you've built up your experience and you have some capable developers on your team you can start to accept fully custom coded projects which can be worth tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars my agency morningside ai regularly services clients worth 15 to thirty thousand dollars and have even recently finished delivering our first six-figure client worth one hundred and twenty thousand dollars there are a huge range of methods to get clients as an ai agency and this is something i'll be breaking down extensively in the final chapter of this video within the step-by-step -step guide as you can see there's a lot more upside to starting an ai agency than the previous models but it definitely takes a lot more work if you want to break through that i'd say 20 to 30k per month level but for those long-term thinkers, building a successful AI agency also opens up more doors to future opportunities as with cash flow and a capable team of AI developers, you have the ability to take bets on things like SaaS and other areas that 99% of people do not have access to. In October of last year, I did exactly this from our own work as a development company and through what I was seeing my students struggle with, I identified that there was a need for a certain type of AI software and because I had the cash flow and because I had the development team, I was able to build it and create my first SaaS called Agentive. And now I go from the opportunity of an AI agency, which yes can make a lot of money, but probably won't sell for a lot. And now I've jumped into this AI SaaS arena and that opens up much bigger opportunities and much higher exit potential than if I was just sticking with the agency itself. As AI agencies are my area of expertise as an agency owner myself and the teacher of the AI agency model to over 35,000 people within my community, in the final section of this video I'll be giving you a step-by-step -step guide on starting your own AI agency in 2024 and how to leverage this business model to build the life of your dreams. Business type number four is an AI SaaS. Experience required to start this is high. The startup costs can be $50,000 or more for developers, marketing and admin staff. The time to profit may be 6 to 12 months or more, but the long-term potential is huge in my opinion. AI SaaS or software as a service is all the rage right now and for good reason to be fair. It combines the SaaS business model with the seemingly limitless potential of AI technology, meaning it's like candy for investors and aspiring entrepreneurs like you and I. A SaaS is where you build some kind of software and provide it to your customers, in most cases via the web, and instead of the customers purchasing the software one-off and owning it, they pay for access to it when they need it, often on a monthly or yearly subscription, of course. You know a whole bunch of SaaSes, you're probably subscribed to it, like Spotify, Netflix, and things like this. I've included the AI SaaS business model within this video, as while not beginner-friendly at all, I do need to plant the seed for you now so that you can see how it fits into the overall AI business landscape, sort of how you could potentially navigate your way towards an AI SaaS and sort of the big opportunities the AI space has to offer. Creating a SaaS involves several key steps and resources that are each one of them is hard enough on their own. Firstly is idea generation. You need to be able to identify a problem that can be solved through a software solution or an AI software solution in this case. This could be through market research user feedback or identifying gaps in current software offerings. Second step is planning and design. You need to outline the features, the user interface, the user experience of the SaaS. This involves wireframing, user flow diagrams, detailed specifications for your software and more. Thirdly, you need to build the thing and go into a development phase where you will actually build the software. You'll need to hire a team of developers and pay them quite a lot of money if they're skilled in various coding languages like JavaScript, Python, and of course being AI experts and LLM experts as well. Then you need to go through a rigorous testing phase to ensure that your software actually works, which is a pretty painful process if I'm being honest from, from my own experience of running a software company. And finally, you need to deploy it and maintain it. So once your software is ready, you got to put it out on the server, make it available to your users, and then constantly update it, aka a lot of constant work. And that's not even the last of it. Number six is marketing and sales. Now that you've made your software, you need to actually promote it and get users to it, which is a whole thing on its own and something I'm not going to get into in this video. So if you couldn't tell from that, creating a SaaS is a resource intensive process requiring a skilled development team, a significant amount of time and effort, and a substantial financial investment for development, hosting, maintenance, marketing, and more. However, with the right idea and execution, a SaaS can provide a stream of recurring revenue for you and set you up for a huge payout if you're one day able to sell the business. I'm talking hundreds of millions or billions of dollars. Business type number five is AI freelancing. The experience required to start this is medium. Your startup cost could be around $200 depending on the courses you buy. 
Time to profit can be around two months and the long-term potential of an AI freelancer, in my opinion, is high. AI freelancing in this case refers to becoming a freelance AI developer. The demand for AI solutions is exploding and working as an AI freelancer, helping companies and individuals with their AI needs can be a great path for those of you with a solid development background. While not something I focus on as this isn't an AI developer channel, my friend Dave does focus on this exact thing and has an excellent program for developers who want to train or upskill as a developer to become an AI engineer. If you want to learn more about this pathway and how you can build a career in the AI space as a developer, I'll leave a link down below to Dave's channel if you want to check it out. In my opinion, the long-term potential for AI development freelancers is actually quite high as you can build up an extensive knowledge of how AI can help businesses and get great exposure to the opportunities that are throughout the industry in general. From there, you can easily pivot to any of the business models we've already discussed. For example, adding some more staff and hiring another developer to separate yourself from actually delivering the services and creating an AI agency. Or picking a specific solution that you build for a client and say, wow, that's really cool. I think I could do something here and creating a SaaS around that particular solution or that particular AI use case that you found. As you can probably tell, there really is something for everyone in the AI space right now, regardless of your skill level. Okay, we're back again, different day, same shirt. Um, please leave a like or subscribe, whatever you want to do down there. Um, this is obviously, I'm putting a ton of work into this video for you guys. So this little midpoint of the video, I'd really appreciate if you do like this kind of content and you have got something out of it so far and you are excited for what's coming, could you please hit down below and subscribe to the channel for more AI business content like this. It really supports me and encourages me to continue to make big videos like this and put a lot of effort and condense it all into one setting for you guys. So. Unfortunately for me, it's not one setting to film it, but um, it is good for you guys to be able to binge watch it in one session rather than over a bunch of different videos. So please like, comment, subscribe, whatever you need to do on there, just support me and then me creating these kind of videos. So the final thing we need to cover for this chapter in particular is now mapping out how all these different business types can actually knit together over months or years into a long-term strategy that will allow you to tap the AI boom for everything it has to offer. This is really where the AI space and the opportunities inside can shine as there's really no cap on how you can progress into bigger and better types of businesses as you progress. For example, with an SMMA, you can generate cash flow, but there aren't any really super obvious next moves and how you can progress that to a better opportunity as you built up marketing resources, which really limit your options in terms of what your next moves could be. However, with an AI business like an AI automation agency, by having the cash flow, the AI experience, and the development team, all three of those, you have the means to be able to really start shooting at any opportunity you see in the AI arena with building software, etc. Over the past 12 months, I've tried all of these businesses that we've covered, except one freelancing, but I have progressively worked my way up from what was essentially $300 consulting calls uh, to having my own AI SaaS, which for my goals and where I want to go is the best vehicle for me to put my time into. So in the final chapter of this video, I'll be sharing my step-by-step -step system and strategy for starting your own AI business that sets you up for success the first time around. Now your goal may not be to make hundreds of millions of dollars, but planning and understanding your end goal and seeing how you can transition your success with the more basic business model like consulting onto the one that you ideally want to build your wealth with over the long term and have long term success with is so key to having the conviction to stick to your plan over a long period of time. So knowing where you want to go, understanding that this basic more, maybe one that you don't enjoy as much, but understanding that the work you're doing in those initial phases of those more basic business models is the groundwork and, and key steps that you need to do to get to the eventual business model that you want to run and really build your wealth with over the long term. To quote one of my favorite philosophers Seneca, which I think is appropriate here, if one does not know to which port one is sailing, no wind is favorable. And from habit two of Stephen Covey's The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, begin with the end in mind. And that's exactly what we're trying to do here. So understanding what your end goal is, and that will allow you to better map out the steps going through. So I've actually got a diagram that I've put together here that gives you as best as I could, some kind of uh, outline of how you can progress from these different more basic business models into the better and sort of, not necessarily better, but bigger opportunities like SaaS long-term. So we're gonna jump on screen now. And we're gonna do a little breakdown of these different opportunities and how they link together. Okay, so here we have on screen a bit of a breakdown. We have the business models we've just covered, of course. It's quite exciting getting on the getting on the keys here. Anyway, <laughs> AI consulting, AI education, AI freelancer, AI agency, and AI SaaS. And we have the phase one, phase two, and phase three. Now these are arbitrary in that there's, no, there's not an exact science, but this just gives you a general idea of how you can kind of transition and what kind of limits you might expect from different business models. So um, first of all, we'll start off with consulting. Um, 
that can go through uh, phase one. You can be making sort of zero to 20K per month consulting. I think I was up to about $10,000 a month at sort of the peak of my consulting. Um, and that wasn't even when I was fully focused on it. So I'm sure some of you can figure out how to get a sort of nice little consulting business going with your LinkedIn outreach or LinkedIn content posting and, or YouTube, etc. But then when you get to sort of the 20K per month, I think at some point it's gonna become more worthwhile to transition that knowledge and experience into a better vehicle for you to scale more long-term. So consulting can very easily move into education of course you've learned a whole bunch you've seen a, how a certain area can benefit or certain ai technologies can benefit a certain type of avatar or niche as you've niched down to some kind of area um, then you can move into the ai education space and start to make educational products for the people or the clients that you usually service so asking some of your clients it's like hey what what kind of resources would this be helpful if you had some kind of course or ebook or community to to help learn and understand this stuff better and that should kind of reveal itself over time if there's an obvious option for a uh, for an education offer uh, within that. But at the same time, you can also transition it down to starting an AI agency. Um, now, of course, if you aren't don't have a technical background, you will again still be kind of lost on the or blind on the technical side of things. But as I mentioned, you can start with the lower code things. Now that you have experience and understanding of these different ways AI can help a business, you can transition that into starting an AI agency. You might be able to find a technical co-founder and say, hey, look, I want to partner with you on this. I've got all these clients who are super interested and this is the exact same route I took. I took AI consulting and I went into an AI agency and what that allowed me to do is capture more value from my consulting calls by then upselling them to AI development services. So people were constantly saying, hey, look, thanks for this consulting call, but how do I, can you help me build this thing? Like, can you, can you do the next step for me? And that was when Morningside AI became a thing and we started being able to deliver and capture more uh, value out of those calls by, uh, by actually delivering the services as well. So. AI agency, a consulting to AI agency, fairly straightforward route. Um, then we have the AI education business model, which I think would scale quite well as, uh, as myself and my team are currently scaling sort of into, into phase two and, and potentially phase, <laughs> phase three sometime soon. Uh, but AI education offers uh, being an info product based thing, they're a lot more scalable. So they can push past this zero to 20K per month mark. And technically they could go to a million or more. It could definitely scale past 200K a month into the sort of 200 to a million per month range. But I think for, for the purposes of this diagram, I think it's good to show that you can then transition it into the final one down here, which is SaaS, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, then the AI freelancer route, again, you can start as a as a newbie or a beginner making no money if you are a developer and have a development background. And the AI freelancer route opens up some great opportunities for you, like being able to go uh, up here and jump into AI education. You might deliver a whole bunch of cool things for clients and you might go, okay, I want to show other developers. There's a massive market of people who are developers and want to get into the AI space because they know how much money is in it and, and what sort of prospects it has for their future career. If you can make some kind of educational product and you can say, here's how I was able to make money as an AI freelancer and be successful over time, then it can sort of move into this education thing. And you can run them simultaneously as well. You could be doing your freelancing um, and your education, but I think when they're combined, it's a bit more on this, on this path here, um, pushing up to that 200K per month mark. Um, and then again, eventually gets down to the, uh, the SaaS route as well. Uh, then we have the AI agency. Again, you can start from, from zero as a beginner using these low code, no code tools. Um, again, you're not gonna be making thousands of dollars a pop by reselling some low code chatbot. We've been over this, but it will allow you to get that experience and eventually hire developers if you need them to expand your skill set. And it scales quite nicely as I've done with my business from zero to 20K up to, up to this 20 to 200K per month mark. Now I think it would be quite difficult uh, from my own experience. Um, particularly in the, the issue with, with my agency, at least for being fully transparent, was hiring the right talent. And for us at Morningside, we're like, we have all these clients and all these projects we could deliver, but we just, we just can't get the right talent. Hiring was taking so much time. We're burning through so many developers that we brought on. And even for myself as someone with a personal brand that can sort of attract or add more, more uh, weight to the offer when we say, hey, come with work with us and you get to be part of this team. It still is very, very difficult to find capable AI developers and they're very expensive as well. So the thing that prevented us from continuing to scale Morningside and just sort of accepting that we'll hold it at a certain level while we pour money into things like our SaaS was that at this point, uh, we didn't have the, the means to, to hire effectively and continue to scale our development team um, at the rate we wanted to go if we stayed in the, uh, in the agency route necessarily. So that's what we did is we transitioned our development resource and the cash flow we're getting from Morningside into a SaaS play down here. And this SaaS is, uh, it doesn't connect here because I don't believe, well, yes, you will go through the, uh, the zero to 20 K and 20 to 200 K phases of your SaaS. Um, I still think that having a line here would be a bit misleading showing that you can start a SaaS. 
um, without the resources required, like an agency or, or anything to back it up. So that kind of that illustrates how the SaaS opportunity is really only something you can get to in this sort of advanced stage. Maybe instead of phase three, I should have called it advanced. Um, so that you really understand that there's, there's different levels to this game. And this SaaS route down the end, if you can get there and you have the resources and it makes sense. Again, I'm not saying this is the only route. You can get your education business and blow through a million dollars a month, I'm sure. If you have the right team and you have the right strategy. Um, but the SaaS route is particularly attractive to myself as I think we're in this bubble. Not a bubble, it probably will be a bubble, let's be honest. But at a certain point, um, there's going to be ridiculous uh, valuations. We are at an economic climate where not many things are, are looking too good for people. So the all the money is flowing into this booming, really only sector that's booming, which is AI at the moment. Um, and there's opportunities for like in the dot-com bubble and boom, bubble boom, same thing. Yeah. <laughs> but in that, in, in that era, there was companies being sold for billions and billions of dollars um, that I mean they might not exist now but there was still a lot of money to be made for people like you and I starting software businesses and selling them um, during the, the the most intense level of that of that hype I think the AI SaaS play is particularly good because you can get these ridiculous events and you're just really putting yourself in the in the way of luck if you uh, strategic and you do have a good strategy to launch run and grow your SaaS. I'll be adding this as a resource on the free school community so if you haven't already signed up head down to the link in the description and you'll be able to join my free community and as I mentioned all the other resources that are included with this video this the the perfect prompt template things like that the AI auditing checklist which you're going to be uh, going over in the next section of this video all of that's going to be included on the school so you can join there for free check it all out and get all the free resources with this video so what I want you to do now is to pause this video and take a, a long moment to think Think about your long-term goals. Maybe you want to be building a cash flowing business and travel the world for a few years. That's completely fine. That's what I've done. I highly recommend it. But you should also have a rough plan of when and how you will progress from these kind of cash flow businesses into bigger opportunities. My plan could be something like, look, I'm going to start as a consultant. I'm going to spend two months studying AI and, and how it can benefit businesses and then working on my social presence at the same time. Then I'll spend maybe the next four months hopping on as many calls as I can and researching wherever the trail of questions from my clients leads me. And once I have sufficient experience, I'll then try to find a technical co-founder to partner with me on an AI agency and begin to drive my consulting clients to my agency as an upsell while continuing to grow my social presence to generate leads for the business. Over the next 12 months, I'll consistently work on delivering client projects and should a great option for niching down as an agency to build like a kind of micro SaaS arise or even to build a full platform out. I'll prototype and test ideas until we're ready to move into SaaS full time. Of course, dates and timelines never work like this, never work as expected. I think it's a Mike Tyson quote, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Uh, you are going to have a plan until you get punched in the face by business, but it's handy to have a plan to stick to one thing for long enough. It's easy to get distracted and move on before you've put in the reps needed to build your foundation. So pause this video and take a moment now to plan out a rough ideal timeline and plan for your AI business journey. Once you finish your crash course on the core AI business skills that every AI entrepreneur must have in the next section, you'll be ready to take action on my step-by-step -step strategy in the final chapter of this video. Chapter three, core AI business skills. The skills you're about to learn are what myself and thousands of other agency owners in my community use daily to identify, build, and refine the solutions we sell to our clients. Regardless of the business model you choose, these skills will form a solid foundation for you to build your business on and put you in the top 1% of people in the AI space right now. However, there's only so much you can learn from watching a video like this. The real knowledge, of course, always comes from applying these skills to your own projects and to those of your clients and customers. Skill number one, prompt engineering. The quality of those instructions directly determines the quality of the output. So therefore, if you're good at prompt engineering, you can extract more value out of these models than the other person or your competition. That's why it is absolutely crucial as an AI business owner. The good news is, is that it's not actually that hard. There's a few key tricks that you need to learn that will put you in the top 1% again of people prompting these models. So get your notebook out for this bit as these tips are what you'll use on a daily basis and really are your first step up from a beginner to AI to someone who is better than average at using AI. These are really the main levers that you can use to squeeze better performance out of your AI systems. Trick number one is called role prompting. This is a pretty basic one where you're telling the AI who or what it is. For example, you are an expert email classifier capable of perfectly analyzing and categorizing emails into the following types, bada bada bada. Your prompts typically should start with some kind of role prompt like this to clearly outline who the AI is and what they're supposed to do. It's been proven to help the outputs if you kind of gas the, gas the model up for lack of a better term and tell how good it is, say you're an expert, you're very good at doing this. If you can include things like that, like you are the best in the world or you are an expert 
it will actually perform better and give better output. So that's just a little trick as well. Next tip we have is shot prompting. So the amount of shots in a prompt refers to the number of input and output examples that you have provided. As shot prompting is by far the most powerful tool for letting the AI know how it should respond. This is something that I think not enough people use, but it's really what the most powerful thing that I use on a daily basis for prompting. The way shot prompting works is by providing examples of the most common inputs and writing the desired response that you want from it. The AI can clearly see the tone and style and length and structure of the responses you want it to give. For example, if you're building a customer support assistant for a business, you can provide examples on how it should respond to the trickiest questions and also how it should reply to their most common questions. Or if you're making a tool that classifies emails, you can provide 10 examples of input emails and then the correct classification as the output, e.g. interested as a label that you want it to output. I recommend providing at least two to three examples in the following format of Q colon next line A colon. And then that's how you can input the question as the input. So it might be the input for the previous example would be the email, the input of the email that it's going to be sent to this uh, this AI to classify in future. So Q would be an email example, and then A would just be the label you want. So if you do QA, 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 three different examples, that will tell the AI very closely how you want it to respond to things. So I highly recommend you put this on pretty much every prompt that you do. This trick alone will massively improve the quality and performance of your prompts. Tip number three is task context. I found that providing enough context to the AI about the task it is doing and, and why can be the difference between good and a great prompt. So of course you don't want to go overboard as the more bloated the prompt gets with, with more words, uh, the less it listens to the, the really key instructions of the task. For example, with the email classifier example, by telling the AI, you are a key part of our sales funnel as when the customer fills out our contact form on our website, an email is sent to our inbox, which you then need to categorize into X, Y, or Z. We are only interested in customers who meet X criteria. So it's crucial that you mark these customers as why so that they are passed directly onto our sales team to contact for an appointment this kind of extra context around the task can really help it to understand where it fits into things and, and as i said take a prompt from good to great prompting tip number four is markdown formatting this is a more recent addition to my prompting tool belt and is something that has really done wonders for me dialing in the prompts of particularly AI agents for building on my, my SAS Agentive and for other particularly tricky tasks. Markdown is a way of formatting plain text intended to be easy to read and easy to write, making it a popular choice for formatting things like readme files or writing messages in online discussion forums and stuff like that. What it basically does is gives us a way to better structure our prompts. As I'm sure you know by now, you can't add headings or lists or bolds into the prompts that you typically give to something like ChatGPT. But by using markdown formatting, we are able to let it know where a heading would be or where list and bolds would be. So it's using markdown formatting inside of our prompt and it may look silly when you write it, but it has actually been proven to lead to better performance as the models themselves have actually been trained on a lot of data that has markdown. So it's been trained to recognize this kind of formatting and understand, okay, that's a heading. Okay, that's a, that's a list and it actually makes them perform better. So it's something that I've only recently learned from my CTO Spencer and something that I use in basically all of my really important prompts now. I've actually got a perfect prompt template that I, I personally use, which I'm happy to share with you guys to save you guys the hassle. Uh, this thing has been refined quite a lot to work for, for most use cases, in particular when you're creating AI agents. I'll leave a link to the perfect prompt template on my free school community that we've launched recently. So if you guys want to jump onto there, it's, again, it's 100% free. You can check out the perfect prompt template and all other resources that will be associated with this video. Once you request to join, it will take a few minutes for you to be accepted. Then you can find the post uh, with the resources for this video under the YouTube tab. So there'll be a tab for YouTube, there'll be a reference to this video, and then inside that will be this, the perfect prompt template and all the other resources for this video. And the final tip for improving your prompt is to use the model settings. Now these are really for finer tweaks to help you with uh, really refining the outputs. There are things like temperature, top P, frequency penalty, and more. And these are a little bit more technical and kind of outside the scope of this video, but luckily for you, I've already done a complete beginners and advanced guide on prompt engineering here on this channel. And that's gonna teach you everything you need to know to be able to use these model settings as well. So I go super in depth on these model settings in the in the advanced guide. So if you wanna watch those and really fill out your prompt engineering skill set, those will be linked down below and you can watch them right after this one. Once you've learned the foundational concepts like role prompting and few shot prompting, etc., you can then start to use some of the powerful prompting tools like prompt expert GPTs that can really do most of the heavy lifting for you. A student of mine, Isaiah, is actually an expert in NLP and has created a GPT for this exact purpose, for prompt writing, and he's happy to share it with the community. So I'll leave this on the school again in the resources you can go down below 
to the description, head over to school, sign up. There'll be a link on the post related to this video. It has a link to this perfect prompt writer GPT, which will help you to incorporate everything you just learned and get it to generate your prompts on demand. Okay, to reiterate, the quality of your prompts determines the value you can extract from these models. So it is extremely important to get this right and build a solid foundation on this skill particularly. The good news for you is that it's getting easier and easier to write good prompts with these tools like GPTs. Core skill number two is understanding APIs. Now throughout your time in the AI space, you'll often hear about APIs. These are essentially the backbone of software communication and not to overload you with technical jargon, APIs are what allow different programs and softwares to talk to one another. In this space, we often use tools like VoiceFlow, which is a chatbot builder. We have Airtable, which is kind of like Excel on steroids. We have Relevance AI, which is a AI tool building platform. And we have Zapier and even my own platform Agentive. Often in order to create some kind of AI system or, or solution, you'll need to combine a number of these different tools together. And unless they have some kind of plug and play integration that comes out of the box with the platform, um, which is highly, highly unlikely. They don't really have those in a lot of cases. You will need to use APIs to send data between these different softwares and also to trigger things at certain times, like send an API call to trigger his app. If you're already handy with APIs, feel free to jump ahead and skip onto the next skill. Uh, but for those of you who are complete beginners and uh, interested in learning about how APIs work, I'll now outline the core parts of an API call. I want you to note these down in your notebook as this stuff took me weeks to probably get my head around when I was trying to learn it. So if this is a little bit difficult for you, don't worry. I had the exact same problems when I was starting and it's completely normal to have difficulties when you're wrapping your head around this. So in this next section, I'll be trying to save you from the circles that I went around when learning APIs. So when you use an API, you are loading a URL, same as when you put in google.com into your browser and you hit enter. What you're doing when you do that is you're requesting info from Google server required to load the web page and present the Google homepage. So when you request it by hitting enter and loading that URL, Google server sends back the code required to load the web page in HTML, CSS or whatever language I'm, I'm sure Google's doing it in. Essentially it sends back what's required to be loaded as the web page and presented and your browser is built around essentially unpacking this information and loading it for you and presenting it on the page. When it comes to connecting different softwares you may be using in your service delivery with APIs, you're also going to be making a request to a server, for example, requesting Airtable for some kind of information stored in your spreadsheet. And then Airtable will send back this data and then you can use it throughout your application, your voice flow chatbot or on Agenda for lead capturing. For example, I might create a lead generation agent or chatbot with my software Agenda and include a lead capture tool. And what this lead capture tool is going to do is to request to Airtable once it has the information from the user asking it to store the email in the name that I've collected on one of my spreadsheets or on one of my tables. And it would then store that as a new lead in my database. And then it would reply to me confirming that the action was successful. So I request the information to be stored and I give it the information it needs. And then once it's stored and everything's done, it's going to send back its response to me saying, yep, all good, everything's done. Um, this operation has been completed successfully. So sometimes when you're calling APIs, you're going to be requesting information. This is typically known as a get request. And sometimes you're going to be sending information away to whatever service it is. This is known as a post request. There are a bunch of other HTTP methods, which is what get and post are. They're different types of HTTP methods, but I don't want to overload you with too much information now. Just get is to request to get information in many cases, and posting is posting some data up to the API for it to process and typically store or create some new record or basically just storing information. Key thing to understand is that when you are using APIs, you are sending requests, either a request to receive info, or as we said, a request to store info. And the software that you're communicating with will send back some kind of response. And in the case of a GET request, this may be a whole bundle of data or information. If you make a GET request to Airtable, it might send back a whole bunch of information from a spreadsheet. But if you are sending a POST request, all you'll probably get back from a POST request when you're saying, hey, here's all this information, can you please store that somewhere? it's not gonna send much back to you. In most cases, it will just send a short confirmation like, yep, all sweet, we've got that information stored successfully. Now I want to briefly run through the core components of an API call. Again, you need to be taking notes here as you'll likely be using this multiple times a day once you're in the trenches and actually building a business. And it may sound a little bit overwhelming, but I promise at the end, I'll tie it all together nicely with a real world analogy of a pizza shop to make it all click in your head. So the first component of an API is known as the base URL. This is the main web address of the API or service that you're trying to access. For example, if we used a shipping example, it would be like the building name or the address of the building. Um, and that's really where we start when we're starting to make a request. This could be something like a subdomain where it's API dot 
yourservice.com and then that's like the base URL, right? In many cases, this will just be the domain of the website or service that you're using. Use a Google example would be google.com forward slash API forward slash V1. That might be the, the base URL of the, the service that you're interacting with. Secondly, we have the endpoint. This is like the specific apartment in the building. So the base URL represents the building and the endpoint represents a specific apartment to deliver the service to or package to if we're using the shipping example. The endpoint is essentially part of the web address that we're, the URL that we're loading that we add onto the end of the base URL. So it might be google.com forward slash API forward slash V1 forward slash get address or that's kind of like the endpoint is the different services that they'll provide. Um, different endpoints are typically created for you to be able to access different services off that base URL. So it might be get address, get coordinates, blah, 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 different services will have different endpoints. So it's like the specific service you're looking at under the umbrella of the base URL of the, the service or the company that you're interacting with. Next, we have HTTP methods, which I mentioned before. These are essentially just classifying different types of requests. So if you're wanting to retrieve data, it would be a get request. If you wanted to create data, it would be a post request. If you're wanting to update data, you'd be using a put request. If you're trying to remove data, you'd be using a delete request. Or if you want to partially update data, you'll be using a patch. It's a little bit too advanced for now. You just need to know post and get. That'll get you through most of the stuff you need to do with your own software. Next, we have the headers of an API call. These are the extra details that help to describe what you're asking for or to really give more information about the request. You can think of this as we describe things like the type of parcel you're sending, like the headers of this packaging example would be a letter versus a box. And typically you'll see uh, when it comes to the stuff that you're, you're doing in things like voice flow, and Airtable. The main thing will be things like authentication, which we're going to touch on next, and the content type. So when these APIs are communicating with each other, they need to know what format to expect that information. Next, we have parameters of your request. So these are like the filters or the specific instructions that tell the service exactly what information you want. Next, we have authentication, and this is essentially some kind of password or secret key that proves that you have permission to access the service. Because if you didn't have some kind of authentication when you are making these requests, making these API calls, then anyone could cop on and make calls to any API and then cause all sorts of, I mean, there's, there's costs associated with writing these APIs. If it's a Google thing and it's like the Google Maps API, they want to obviously be paid for providing that API as a service. Uh, so they need to get you to go through the process of setting up an account, putting billing on, and then you get your API key and then you can include that in your request to prove, yes, I'm a member, I'm paying for this, da 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 da. And every time you do a request, it's going to be checking that you've got credit, et cetera. So it's authenticating essentially how you're, you're paying for the service in many cases. Next, we have the response, and this is the data or information that the service sends back. The API will send back to you after processing a request. So as I said, for the get request, this will often be the data that you requested. If it's a post request, it might just be a confirmation like, yep, all good, we've stored that. Or if it's a delete request, it'll be like, yep, we've successfully deleted that. Um, and it's just kind of a confirmation rather than sending a whole lot of information that you need to save and, and use within your application. And finally, thought I'd throw this one in as well. There's error handling that goes on with these with these API calls. When things don't go as planned, the API will send back an error code and messages telling you what went wrong. So I won't go into it now, but it's like 404 is a common one. When you go onto a web page and just make up a random URL, you'll hit enter and it will try to get the information to load that page. And then we'll go, oh, well, that, we don't have that page. That's not a, not a valid endpoint for our site. Um, and so it'll automatically send back the 404 page and say, hey, look, you're looking for something that we don't have. There's nothing here for us to load. The other one that you'll see quite often is a 200 response. And 200 is just basically like, yep, all sweet. Everything went fine. Now to add a bit of context to all the stuff we've just learned, we can use this pizza shop example, which is kind of my go-to for explaining this. The base URL would be the public phone number of the pizza shop. The endpoint would be the extension that you need to call that pizza shop in order to order pizza versus book at tables. Let's pretend that this particular pizza shop has extensions that are set up in order to allow you to access different things like order a pizza or to book a table, like dine in or, or take away essentially. So let's pretend that you have to dial up the base URL, which is the whole phone number, and then the extension in order to get through to what you're looking to get. So say if I'm looking to book a table, I'd have to call up the base URL, the phone number of the business, and the extension, and then when I get on the line, I can give it the information I need. If we're looking to place a new pizza order, we might be making a post request, so sending some data, 
to the order of pizza extension and the headers may contain key info about our order like whether or not it's home delivery or pickup. The parameters would be the specific details about our order that we would give over the phone, for example, the type of pizza or the size of the pizza, the toppings, etc. The authentication in this case would be giving our payment over the phone to gain access to the pizza delivery service. And the response, of course, would be the pizza arriving at your door. If there were any kind of errors, like they are out of stock of a particular ingredient, the cashier would provide that as a reason. That's the same as providing the error message back to you in the response that APIs will typically do if there's a problem. I hope that it'll make sense. I know it can be a lot to get in one go, but uh, just rewatch it a couple of times. Here's what an API block looks like on most of the apps that you'll be using. Um, so pause the video now and take a moment to kind of connect with the dots. Each of the things that you've noted down in your notebook, you should be able to see a field for them. And once that's all filled out, you can hit the send button and it will send the request and it should send you back exactly what you're looking for. Theoretically, of course, if you were building this in some kind of software. One final note here is that sometimes when you're doing post requests, you will use the request body to send your data instead of parameters. And this is typically done in JSON and the structure needs to be exactly as the API expects. JSON is actually super easy to understand. You just need to ask ChatGPT to teach you how to write and understand it to learn the basics of JSON and you'll be away to the races. I know that might've been a lot, but this knowledge of APIs is crucial to understanding the next skill, which is by far one of the most versatile and high leverage opportunities in tech right now for people like you and I. Skill number three is tool creation. Knowing how to build AI tools is a mandatory skill for anyone looking to make money in the AI space, in my opinion. Even if you're not selling them to clients directly within the opportunity or business model that you choose to pursue, using them internally within your own business to speed up things like workflows or automate whole processes is hugely powerful and is something that you definitely need to be doing as an AI entrepreneur. So what do I mean by a tool? There is no real one definition for a tool as they can be used in many different ways, but here's a breakdown of things and some examples. So in the most basic form, tools are functions. Some functions expect inputs, some don't, some return an output, others don't. But basically when triggered, these functions do something. This could be interacting with some APIs across the web or performing some calculations and data manipulations on the inputs you've provided before returning the result back to the user or to whatever's on the other end awaiting it. When you create tools, you can use them in a number of different ways. You can use them via a simple web page like Relevance AI's use page. These are great because they can be used internally within your business, or you can even build them for clients and send them that page for them to use and, and get value out of as well. You can also use tools via custom actions for GPTs or AI agents, which we'll be touching on more in a little bit. You can also use them via API within a platform like VoiceFlow or Airtable using the skills that you've just got. And final thing that you can do with them is actually bulk running these AI tools and functions on thousands of spreadsheet rows at a time. Basically creating some kind of AI function and then running it and using uh, using rows of a, a spreadsheet as the input. So you can kind of run through the whole thing at once and create new values and stuff like that, which I think is super cool and it's actually very valuable when done correctly. But in many cases for you and I, the simplest use case for tools is taking in some text inputs, running it through one or more LLM or, or ChatGPT step uh, that we've pre-prompted and then returning the answer or the result from that AI step. This stuff can be difficult for you to wrap your head around when I'm just talking at you like this. So we're going to jump quickly onto my computer here and I'll give you a little demo of Relevance AI and examples of a couple of tools so that you can actually conceptualize what the hell I'm talking about here. So I, well, I apologize if you've been struggling, but I want to throw this bit in so that you can actually connect the dots here. So Relevance AI, they'll be linked down in the description if you want to check them out there. Um, but over here, I've signed in and created an account. You can see the dashboard of some of the tools that I've made prior. Um, now, a couple of good examples I can jump in and show you. Um, this AI agent perfect prompt writer is probably a good start. So here, I'll edit this one. And you can see here, if I zoom things up, we have our user inputs. In this case, I've got the agent name, the agent context, etc. You can pause it and just take a little look, see at these things. What this is going to do is create a perfect prompt for your AI agent. Uh, it goes down here, etc. So these are all inputs that the tool is going to expect. And then I have this simple, this is the most simple example of a, of a tool, like I mentioned, is just inputs into an LLM step. In this case, I've prompted it with all this good stuff to tell it how to write a prompt. And the key thing is that it inserts the values from the inputs up here. Again, all no code. These inputs that you provide or whenever the user uses it, it's gonna insert those inputs here because I've clicked and referenced all these different variables. So each time this runs, it's going to take the information from those inputs and it's going to inject it into this prompt and it's going to give me the output down here. So if I, uh, you can run it within here. So if I filled all of these out, um, gave it about, about a bar, then I could go run all and I'd get the output here. But the more interesting thing for us is that we can then create all this, say for a client or say for internal use within our company. 
and we can click this use tab and then we get three different options here so we have the shareable app which if i click on this and i copy this and i open this up in a new tab this will give us a nice web page for either my team internally to use this or if i was an agency or a freelance i could create these for clients and then i could send these urls as as proof of service delivery and say hey look here's a tool either to test it before we move forward or like here's the here's the deliverable that you are asking for so i can go through here and give it a name lead gen assistant um, agent context lead generation expert for my website uh, conversions capture lead um, being pretty brief here, as you can imagine a uh, lead capture tool is provided ideal output um, uh, none let's skip that for now I don't have time notes on style be profit uh, let's go talk like a pirate and be very very brief in your responses knowledge context you have a document with my company info <laughs> and if i run the tool it's going to go through all of that take those inputs inject it into that llm pre-prompted llm step that i created and it's going to output the kind of prompt that i'm looking for now this is just one example of a use case um here you go here's the output so role act as legion assistant ba -da -ba -da -ba. specifics tools etc so you can use the same thing for, as we'll see a little bit later, uh, you could use it for short form generation. There's all sorts of cool stuff you can do here. Um, go back to this use tab. We could also uh, embed this snippet onto a website if you want to. We can allow other people to clone this as a template. Um, if you want to share it away as an educational resource for your education business, you can go run in bulk on here, which I think is super cool that I mentioned before. I can upload a spreadsheet of data and I can use each of these columns as the inputs that were provided in this previous step. So whatever inputs you have, I can say, okay, for each row, I want to use the agent context for this variable and this for this, this for this. And then when it runs it, it's going to strip that whole line, insert it in, generate the prompt. So if I had this spreadsheet filled with uh, information on a bunch of different agents that I wanted to make prompts for, I could do them all in one go without having to go back and forth. Then finally, you can use this as an API. Uh, we can copy this. This is the endpoint again. So you're starting to connect these dots here. Um, you need to make a JSON request body like this. Um, and you can use this within your app. So if, say using the voice flow example or using it on Agentive as a tool for your AI agent. Uh, this is how you can use the tool that you create via API, um, which is pretty handy as well. Another quick example of a tool could be this general company research thing, super basic. Uh, again, you can really get super advanced with this over time if you choose to learn the platform and get better. But essentially this is expecting one input a company website url you put in the url it's being saved to this variable and it's going to extract the website content um, using relevance's built-in web scraper so it's going to extract that url it's going to give it out as text and then we're going to have a couple llm steps boom pass it into there and then chain it up with another one you get to pick the different models you want to use etc then it's going to output it so you're essentially able to become an ai developer and build these complex pipelines and tools without ever having to write any code and by using simple things like built-in web scrapers, API call blocks and stuff like this. So I hope this has got you excited and this can really show you that you don't need to be a developer to build some really powerful AI apps. In this case, leveraging the web scraping tools and these sort of built-in uh, LLM blocks that Relevance has allows you to do all sorts of cool things. And if I click here, there are so many different things that it can do. All these AI tools, um, LLM fine tune data, all this stuff you can do with like LinkedIn, convert string with JSON, Slack, Calendar, all sorts of cool stuff you can do, integrations. Um, Relevance just has a ton of cool stuff out of the box that you can start playing around with. So hopefully that demo gave you a little bit more context on what a tool is, what kind of ingredients you have, how they come together, how you can use them, etc. But the thing to understand is that many small to medium sized businesses are already using ChatGBT to assist with specific tasks. However, normally within these companies, it's done by being passing around these massive prompts around the business and expecting staff to kind of use ChatGPT to figure it out themselves with these prompts. The way I see it, one of the easiest ways to understand AI tools for businesses is that creating tools essentially allows you to streamline and standardize all of these tasks and ways they're using AI already uh, into tools like I've just shown you there. So you can streamline all these prompts and condense them into one sequence or tool. Uh, and then make that available via a use page or via a GPT or an agent. And by centralizing that prompt into the tool, then the business owner or yourself as the person who's building these systems for them, you can go in whenever you need to update the prompt or change how the system outputs. 
you make a couple of changes and then you publish it and then everyone across the team has access to that exact same tools and it gets updated instantly rather than hey look here's the new prompt version for this 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 made a couple of changes it's a great way of streamlining things and standardizing it across a company especially if there's a lot of people involved you can then even take this a step further and instead of making them use a tool via input boxes on a web page you can actually connect that same tool and add any other tools you want and put them all together into a GPT or an AI agent for the team to use. This is really the magic of being able to create tools as they can be added into conversational agents and used as part of a, a bigger mix of tools and sort of centralized all into one chatbot experience. The way all of this links back into APIs is that we just covered is that when you wrap an API around a tool or around a, a function, which is what you're creating, you can call that API from within your AI agents and allow your chatbots to do crazy powerful things for your users. And while AI agents and GPTs are a little outside of the scope of this video, I have done a complete beginner's guide on everything you need to know about GPTs and how to deploy and set up your first AI agent step by step. In this complete guide, I go into far more depth on how tools can be attached and used by agents. So I highly recommend you check out that video next and I'll link that in the description and also at the end of this video for you to watch after this. It's really the perfect bit of content to watch after this as it teaches you uh, actually how do you apply a lot of the stuff I've just learned and start to create your first AI agents and, and deploy them to different platforms as well like websites. The good thing is that we have dozens of platforms to choose from that allow you to build simple or extremely complex AI and LLM based tools without needing to code. And of course, Relevance AI is my favorite and go-to for creating tools, particularly for AI agents. For example, I'm personally in the process of creating a content assistant AI agent or content assistant GPT that will help me to better repurpose my YouTube content. So I want this to be just one chatbot where I could basically run my whole personal brand and whole content repurposing process. To do this, I planned out a few different Relevance tools that I need to make. Firstly, a YouTube transcript to a description generator a YouTube URL to LinkedIn post generator, a YouTube URL to uh, X or Twitter post generator, uh, a YouTube URL to community post generator, and a YouTube URL to short form script generator as well. So all of these different things, essentially taking a YouTube URL, it's going to load that, pull the transcript, and then turn that content and that transcript content into a bunch of these posts for different platforms that I can use and extract some of the, the points I make from these big videos like this and put those onto different platforms as well. All these tools are really is chaining a bunch of LLM steps back to back and something like relevance and using my prompt engineering skills to spit out a result that I'm happy with. I can then connect up all of these to an agent on my platform Agentive or create a GPT as well. And there I can use it to generate all my content needs. I can go on there and say, hey, here's the URL. Can you please generate me three LinkedIn posts, two X posts, three community posts, two short form scripts from this video paste in the URL and it will automatically use all of those tools in the background and give me all of the posts that I'm looking to do. So you can learn again how to do this on my GPT's full guide as I mentioned, it'll be linked below um, and also on the end screen of this video. Um, and I've also got a short video on how to create tools with Relevance AI that'll link down there as well. So everything you need, if you didn't understand any of that, I have additional videos on to, to really give more context to it. I'm actually in the process of planning a much longer complete guide to AI tooling using Relevance with multiple examples of tools built step by step in front of you. So if you'd like me to rush that video out, it's not really high in the pecking order at the moment, um, but let me know down in the comments below. I'd be happy to uh, push that out. And I think if there's one skill you could master to make money with AI, it would be this kind of tooling. Next is AI auditing. AI auditing refers to being able to figure out where AI can benefit in most cases, a business. This skill is really the thing that you will be building and compounding over the next few years in AI business. Essentially, the ability to enhance a business with AI is kind of the meta skill of the, of the AI entrepreneur at this point. The more clients you work with, the more experience you will gain and the better you will get at identifying opportunities and deploying powerful AI solutions to create value in these businesses. The better you get at this skill, this will obviously increase your value and therefore the value of the services you provide and the amount you're able to charge at the end of the day. While the AI audit itself is kind of a questionnaire or a process you can do with a client to learn more about their business and identify ways that AI could help, AI auditing also kind of refers to the broader skill of understanding how AI can benefit things and, and businesses in particular. As an AI agency owner or freelancer, this is how you can convert AI curious business owners into paying customers by suggesting a high value system that excites them. And as an educator, this is how you can attract attention with your own content by sharing interesting ways that AI can help your target market. And of course, being a SaaS owner, the big opportunities will lie in the B2B space, business to business, not necessarily the B2C space for the foreseeable future as 
OpenAI kind of cleans up on the B2C side for ChatGPT. The act of performing an AI audit can be done on a discovery call with a potential client. I actually have a complete AI audit checklist that you can get on my school, my free community, as I mentioned, you can go down and click on the link there to go through to that. And of course, all of the other resources are on school as well. I'd love to cover the AI audit checklist here, but it's basically a big list of questions, which isn't the most engaging content for you all. So I think it's best if I put it as a resource and you can go on there and use that when you hop in your own calls and own discovery calls, you can run through this AI audit checklist and understand what you need to learn about a business to be able to recommend AI solutions to them. Long story short, AI auditing as a skill refers to your ability to create value with AI by spotting an opportunity and being able to plan a solution around it. Now there's no shortcut for building the skill. You just need to get on calls with clients and customers and get reps in of helping these people to benefit from AI and build up your knowledge on this topic over time. ChatGPT coding. AI businesses inherently involve software, which means your ability to understand how software works is critical to your success. Now, while historically to start a tech-based business, you'd need to have either taught yourself to code and applied your learnings over 12 to 24 months or gone to college. But with the release of ChatGPT, the game has completely changed for our benefit. Of course, we are at a unique time in history where not only do you now have your your own free coding expert at your fingertips in the form of ChatGPT, who is literally ready to assist you with almost any coding task you can imagine. We are also in the middle of a kind of no code revolution, which is rapidly reducing the amount of actual code you need to write in order to create powerful software. This is truly an incredible time to be an entrepreneur. Software businesses and the riches that they offer have never been more accessible to the average person like you or I. So while knowing how to code is a great advantage when coming into the AI business arena, if we want to call it that, it is by no means mandatory if you can learn to leverage no-code tools and chat GPT properly as a coding assistant. Let's be real though, if you're not a developer, you're not likely going to be able to make some production grade AI software through ChatGPT. That's why when you're starting an AI agency, we have the three tiers of deliverables. So you can jump in at a level you're comfortable and grow your experience and sort of learn as you go and increase through those tiers over time as you build more skills and more experience. The reality is that the non-technical AI business owners typically use ChatGPT for a few key things. Firstly, understanding technical terms. If you see some kind of coding term like an endpoint and you don't understand, you can ask ChatGPT and it will help you until you've got your head around it. Secondly, explaining code. Sometimes you run into code snippets that you need explained on these kind of low code platforms, ironically, uh, or the low code platforms at least. You can go back and forth with ChatGPT to explain every part of that bit of code that you're seeing. Thirdly, ChatGPT is great at writing basic scripts and the connecting kind of pieces of code that will connect your different services and softwares that you're using. Sometimes you may need to whip up a little bit of custom code to connect two of these softwares together, as I said, and ChatGPT can help you with writing this in seconds. And finally, in my opinion, one of the most useful ways of using this is planning your approach to building your solution. When you have a new client or a new customer, ChatGPT can be a valuable consultant to help you to identify the right approach to building a solution, including the softwares required to achieve your end result. Here's a few handy strategies my community members have used to hack their coding abilities with ChatGPT. Firstly, you can create a coding tutor GPT by throwing in transcripts of YouTube videos from channels like Free Code Cam and using it to plan and refine your work or you can create an AI solutions expert GPT by adding in knowledge documents that outline all of your favorite uh, no-code and low-code software that we use on this channel, like Airtable and VoiceFlow, Agentive, et cetera. And then you can ask her questions like, hey, how can I create this for my client? And allow your GPT to plan your approach using the softwares that you're most comfortable with using. If you want me to do a video showing you how you can create GPTs like this, let me know down below. ChatGPT coding is a powerful skill and something that can massively increase your earning potential in the AI business space as it unlocks so many more things that you can sell. Final skill that's optional is content creation. One skill that can be like rocket fuel for your AI business is content creation. Now I'm speaking from personal experience here, but we are so early in this AI space and in this wave that we're seeing. If you can figure out content creation like I did last year, then you can generate a essentially an infinite lead generation machine for your business and attract opportunities in the space to you rather than having to do the hard work of getting out there and finding them for yourself. At Morningside, being fully transparent, we have never run any ads or cold email to get our clients. Every single one of them has come from my channel or via a referral from a client who came from my channel. So if, if a video like this isn't your thing, constant content posting on things like X or LinkedIn can be a good substitute. If you guys would like some kind of guide on how to become an AI content creator, um, then I could definitely put together some kind of a basic launch strat or beginner's guide for you um, based on what's worked for me. Uh, but I won't go into depth here. As I said, it is an optional one, but I think it is something that can be very, very valuable, especially at this time when these, these new markets like AI are really finding their feet 
And for myself, at least from my own experience, you can come in at sort of the ground level and then over the next five to 10 years, really build your reputation as, as one of the, the OGs, which we still have the opportunity to do now. As a word of caution, a big mistake I see a lot of beginners make when they start to do content is try to do too much too soon. So instead of trying to do all the platforms and being shit at all of them, stick to one until you've mastered it and you'll get far better results that way as I did with YouTube. I just focused on this and now I'm sort of expanding out to other platforms as well. Chapter four, my step-by-step -step guide to starting an AR business in 2024. And now what you've all been waiting for, my step-by-step -step system launching your own AI business in 2024, right? Well, I hate to break it to you, but I may have lied a little bit here. Um, the final chapter won't be me yapping for another half an hour and trying to give you step-by-step -step instructions to start a business. Give me a second to explain. <laughs> My last one of these videos was created in July of last year and has since become outdated as the strategies to launch an AI business have changed. I'm always basing my strategies and recommendations to people and students in my community off what I'm seeing from my own businesses and what I'm seeing other students succeed. Because I put so much effort into this video in particular this time around, I don't want this final section to ever end up giving you information or strategies that isn't 100% up to date and in line with the best practices I'm seeing myself in my community. So to solve this problem of adapting my strategy over time in a rapidly moving space with static videos like this, I've done what any sane person would do. I built an entire end-to-end -end AI business education and coaching platform. And before you punch your screen and disgust that I've just lured you in only to get you to pay me, you don't have to pay a dollar to use the software I've created. Well, myself and the team at Morningside have very creatively called AI Liam is a originally exclusive to my Accelerator community, but for this particular video, I've spent the past month rebuilding it from the ground up, literally, to have both a free and a paid route, meaning that you can try it completely for free right now. I have built AI Liam to be your personal AI business coach who is able to learn about your unique situation and recommend the perfect strategy for you. This is because over, over time and, and countless interviews with students and talking to people in my community, I realized that there's no one size fits all path for people who want to start an AI business. For the past six months, I've been I'm racking my brain trying to force myself to come up with this perfect clean line strategy that, that's super simple for everyone. But in the reality, all of you have different backgrounds, different experiences, and some of those are, are great strengths that simply cannot be tapped into if I try to give some, some cookie cutter strategy. So that's why in AI Liam, I've distilled all of my learnings from seeing hundreds of students success and equipped AI Liam with a set of strategies that it will build around you and personalize to you based off your background. At the start of the AI Liam experience, you will go through a 10 to 15 minute onboarding process where AI Liam will learn about your current situation on things like your experience, your connections, your current skills, even your current commitments as well, like your job or your family. Only then will you be taken into the step-by-step -step strategy section that provides you with the resources you need to do things like upskill and learn more things about the space, build your skills before you start your business and after analyzing carefully which skills you're deficient in of course we'll recommend you the exact resources you need to watch to fill out those deficiencies before you move forward you will then be given crystal clear instructions every step of the way and once you complete the step you can check back in with AI Liam and you'll be given the next step in your personalized strategy the only difference between the free and the paid versions is the resources provided of course my accelerator members will get all of the premium resources included with an accelerator membership at every step of the way while the free members will get excellent free resources that I've curated these from all over the internet and also from my own free resources that I've made available. So I hope you guys don't get too mad at me for tricking you, but I did say I would give you a step-by-step -step strategy at the end, but this way, no matter when you watch this video, six months or a year from now, you know that you will be getting the latest and best strategy for you to maximize your chances of success. That is the core idea that we're going for here. We will be constantly updating that program and the steps that you could take in through so that you can get the best strategy for you. That's the whole idea here, so that we can update that whenever we want and you can still click through and get access to that and the latest and greatest strategies will be right at your fingertips. So if you want to try AI Liam and get your own personalized launch strategy for your own AI business, you can click the first link in the description. And as a word of caution, we don't have any clue how much this free version is going to cost us in open AI usage. So if you want to try it out, please try it out now because at some point in the future, if there's so many of you using it that it's costing us hundreds of dollars a day to maintain it, uh, we will need to restrict the number of messages you can send. So 
If you want to use it, use it now before we have to restrict it at some point, but I will try to keep it free for as long as I can. I really have put so much work into making this AI Liam free for you guys. So please give me feedback through the support chat bot that's inside of AI Liam. You can give any feedback on how we can continue to make it better for you. And of course, this video itself has taken me weeks to prepare and days to shoot. So could you please hit down below if you've enjoyed it, you've gotten anything out of this at all. Uh, please leave a like and it really helps me reach more people with these videos. Leave a comment if you've got any feedback for me or something that you really enjoyed out of this. Let me know what you're hoping to do with AI business in the near future and any things that I can do in future with more videos, what you'd like to see and how I can continue to help you to reach your goals. And just a reminder before we go, you can join my free school community for all of the resource mentioned throughout this video, including my AI audit checklist to get you started on the AI auditing skill, the perfect prompt template and more and all the videos I've mentioned in the video that can lead you to, to additional learnings on my channel are linked below as well. So thank you so much for watching. I sincerely hope that you've learned something after watching this entire thing. That would be a great outcome for me. Um, and I'm really looking forward to crossing paths with some of you as AI entrepreneurs in the near future. These kinds of opportunities come around once in a lifetime and the best time to start your AI business was yesterday. The next best time is right now. If you're interested in learning everything you need to know to create AI agents and GPTs as a beginner, you can watch my other complete guide just like this video up here. But aside from that, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.